Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's use what we've learned so far to try and find the following. For this particular triangle, which is basically upside down with its base as far away as possible from the x-axis, we're going to find the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis, the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis, the moment of inertia relative to the origin, and the radius of gyration relative to the origin. Now that seems like a lot, but remember we found the solutions to the moment of inertia of a triangle relative to the x-axis when a triangle is situated like this it's one-sixth area times h squared when it's situated like this it's one-half a the area times h squared now let's apply that to what we have over here so it looks like this is very similar to what we have over here so that means that we can say that the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis would be equal to one-half the area of the triangle times the distance to the base away from the x-axis squared. Now in this case the area of the triangle would be equal to one-half the base times the height and we multiply the times h squared so this becomes then one-quarter times the base times h to the third power. So this would be the moment of inertia of that triangle relative to the x-axis. Now let's find it relative to the y-axis. Now notice we have the triangle split into two halves. They're similar, they're opposite one another, they're the same in area. So what we can do there is that the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis is equal to twice the moment of inertia of each of these halves. And those halves, they look a lot like this situation right here. So we're going to take one half, or I should say one sixth, the area of each of the two triangles, so it would be, well, what I can do here is this would be the area of a half a triangle because it's just one side only, but since we have times two, that becomes the area of the whole triangle. So this becomes one time the area of the whole triangle or twice the area of a half a triangle, okay, one side of it. And then we multiply that times h squared. Now in this case, h squared is the distance of the farthest point of the triangle relative to the axis of rotation. That would be b over 2 instead of h. So in this case, it would be b over 2 quantity squared. So now let's simplify that. So this becomes equal to 1 sixth the area times b squared over 4. And the area, of course, would be 1 half the base times the height. So this becomes 1 over 6 times 1 half the base times the height times the base squared divided by 4. And then we multiply all this out, we get 8 times 6, that's 48, or 1 over 48 b cubed times h. And this would be the moment of inertia of that triangle relative to the y-axis. Now let's find the moment of inertia relative to the origin. We know that the equation there becomes simply equal to the sum of the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis plus the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis. So we simply have to add these two together. So that becomes one quarter b h cubed plus one over 48 b cubed h. Hmm. Can I simplify that? Well, I could factor out a b times a h times one half. I can leave it like that. So what would be the best way, the simplest way to write this? Eh, we probably can just leave it like that or, so let me circle it. So that's one way to leave it. Or realizing that one half the base times the height is the area, I can say that this is equal to one half times one half base times the height times h squared for the first term and then I can do the same over here that would be plus 1 over 24 times 1 half base times the height that would be the area times b squared and of course since this is the area of the triangle and this is the area of the triangle I can then say that this is equal to 1 half the area of the triangle times h squared plus 1 over 24 the area of the triangle times b squared and we can then factor this out so we can write this as one half the area times 
h squared plus 1 over 12 times b squared. So there's a little, some games we can play with the algebra, but ultimately it all gets you the same thing. This is may, maybe in a more compact form. The only thing left to do now is to find the radius of gyration. Where would I have to put the strip? And of course it would be a circular strip around the origin such that the moment of inertia of the circular strip would be the same as the moment of inertia of this triangle rotating about the origin. So there would be a strip some distance away like this, all the way around. And we want to know the distance, Oop, not that distance of course, but the distance from the origin to that, the radius of gyration relative to the origin. So therefore, to find that, this would be equal to the square root of the moment of inertia relative to the origin divided by, well, that would be the area of that triangle. So what I could do is, let's see here, maybe, hmm, ah, I think I have a good idea. I'm going to take this form of the equation to find the moment of inertia because after all, I'm going to divide it by the area and the area is equal to one half bh or perhaps I can even do it like this. So this is equal to the square root of and the whole thing divided by the area. Of course the area cancels out. That means the radius of gyration relative to the origin would be equal to the square root of And that's how we find the radius of gyration for this particular triangle. So once you have the basic equations of a triangle, then you can very easily take any triangle in any direction, any shape, and find the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis, the y-axis, the origin, and you can find the radius of gyration just like that. And that's how it's done.